Okay, so here I am. I'm getting ready to draw a character that I created back in 1992 called Road Warrior Drake. And um, before I do, let me give you a little quick history. So Road Warrior Drake was a character that I created for my own little comic book series when I was young. Um, I did a couple of years of comics with the character, and then in 1994, I stopped for a bit. And then I brought him back a couple of times in 96 for some crossover comics before I stopped drawing him. And then last year, 2017, I began, uh, <clears throat> I, I revived the character, and now I'm doing a series of comics uh, in part of a bigger comic book universe with other characters that I created. More on that later on in a future video. But um, in reaction to uh, this new Thundercats Roar video that, that's been out, I decided that I wanted to, you know, get back into drawing and show what real art is like. And I'm not saying that my art's the greatest, but there's definitely a distinction in my details. There's definitely a, a care to hone in on, on skills, artistic skills. And I do believe in objective content, I mean, objective uh, uh, criticism when it comes to art. So I'm gonna draw my character, Road Warrior Drake. And, you know, just for you guys so you can see it, so you can see what I can do. Um, I, whenever I draw the character, I either begin with the eyes or the beak. So today I'm going to begin with the eyes, as you can see. So he has white pupilless eyes in the vein of the Ninja Turtles. After the earlier itiner earlier incarnations of the character, I had him wear a bandana over his eyes, in the same way, uh, uh, in the same way that uh, the Ninja Turtles had. That's how I used to draw him back in '92, all the way up to 1996. But in the revived comic of last year, <clears throat> I removed that visage because I didn't want it to be like the Ninja Turtles visually, so I took that off. And um, his only apparel that he has that's, in my opinion, his trademark is his vest, which I'll show you in a little while. But So you can see a little bit of inspiration from Disney when I draw him because Donald Duck is one of my favorite cartoon characters. I like Donald Duck. I like... Uh, uh, he's, he, I think he's the best Disney character from that golden era. Much, much better than Mickey Mouse. But anyway, so I gave him a, a little snarl, a little uh, dismissive snarl that um, he has. And um, I, I uh, like, like to do a lot of shading. I like to create a little 3D um, appearance with him. So <clears throat> I do a lot of cross hatching. Cross hatching, or when I really have time, I do stipples. But uh, this is a quick video, so I'm not doing stipples. So I'm gonna just stick with uh, the cross hatching. I give him some cheeks on the side, uh, extend his eyebrows a bit, do a little uh, shadow by the eyes to indicate roundness. So you can see a little shadow between his eyes, so that's, that gives a little space there. Those aren't pupils, by the way, those are shadows. Road Warrior Drake doesn't have pupils. Yeah, let's do a little bit of the uh, the beak area, give a little uh, indication that the mouth is open and he has a little snarl there. You know, now that I pointed out, it does look like he has pupils there. <laughs> but yeah, rest assured, those aren't pupils, those are shadows uh, uh, right by the eyes. He, he has no pupils. Um, and now I go ahead and draw the arms. He, he's supposed to have biceps, like he's built. Okay, there's, a, there's three versions of this character's uh, story. So I read condoms three times, no twice, because the first time wasn't a retcon, but he's been retconned two times since then. In the, the first series, he was a scientist who, um, there was an accident with some mafia guys and uh, he got exposed to one of his lotions, I'm sorry, his, his potions, and um, he turned into a giant duck. And uh, the reason why he became a duck was because they had a duck character, a, a pet duck in the laboratory. And he became fused with that duck, and that's what turned him into the duck, the gigantic duck. He had a love interest, and his whole thing was going up against this, this mafia who obtained the potion, and some of them became monsters themselves. And, that, and there was actually a storyline where one of the main mafia guys who kind of like played the star screen role, you know, the second in command who was traitorous, lecherous, he um, became this uh, uh, mutant bat with a hook similar to the Battle Beast figures. And the lead Mafia guy, eventually he gets fatally injured, but before he dies, they transplant his brain into a machine, a four-legged machine, uh, a machine that I call Tanathoclon. Kind of 
kind of named after the uh, the Aztec city. And then Tenochtitlan would become a, a villain. Although I never did this, the sh issues, but the plan was for him to become a villain down the road, a main villain and an arch villain between him, and there'll be enmity between him and the Road Warrior Dragon, as well as a power play between him and the, the giant bat that I named Malakha. So Malakha was the mutant bat who was the Starscream character, and Tenochtitlan was the robot, the four-legged robot with the brain of the main mafia guy. So that was the uh, original series. Or the plan for the original series, and then 1994, I retconned it, so I made it a little bit more uh, uh, grounded. So it was less monsters and more just the city uh, dealing with a giant mutant duck. And uh, Drake was a guy, a young guy, in the streets, who um, he gets exposed to some kind of uh, liquid or whatever, and it turns him into a giant duck. And he ends up living out in the streets in, in darkness. And what he does is he goes after these gangs, these gangs that uh, uh, have, um, you know, they they've hurt his people. He goes after the mafia guys. These are a different brand of mafia guys, by the way. These are they're like I said, a little bit more grounded. Um, but he goes after them, and um, he befriends this detective, this um, woman that I visually modeled after Stacy Dash. Very lovely woman. So I modeled her after Stacey Dash, and she she was kind of like Road Warrior Drake's um, human ally. And between them, they um, were able to bring down the bad guys. Uh, both comics, both series had a lot of gunplay and a lot of shooting in them. And Drake is a, uh, along with his physical strength, he would um, he would uh, pack his guns and he would shoot up. He's going to a shooting spree. So visually, it was important for me to make sure he was physically built. So as you can see, like I have the muscles now down pat, I'm drawing his hands. And you can see the vest. You can see the, the vest has, his vest has um, three or four spikes, metallic spikes protruding outwards. Um, it's a blue vest. It was blue when I colored it. So I might maintain the blue or I might turn it brown because in other itinerations, I also drew Drake with a brown jacket and a brown fedora. <clears throat> so either I'll keep the, the vest blue or brown if I ever, Resume coloring. Uh, but for now, that's irrelevant because I'm drawing with a blue pen, so it'll be blue. Um, I, I, I always try to make sure that the spikes are protruding and then that they look visually like the metallic. But right now, I'm, I'm working on the, uh, the muscles. There we go. So now I am enhancing the, uh, the spikes. I'm, I'm putting some, some like black shading on it to kind of uh, indicate the metallic surface of it. That's how I usually indicate metallic surface. I would put in some black shades here or there. And sometimes I would include hollow shading, like I would just draw a circle or a square to indicate where there would be you know, some brightness on it. Okay. And just a little cross, not cross hatching, but some, just some simple hatching to again indicate a the shininess of it. And then I would go back and uh, try to redraw the spikes. Again, they, they, they protrude, so I want to... Uh, uh, I want to indicate that there's a uh, protrusion going on with them. They stand out because they're metallic. Drake is all hairy and what have you. And the vest is uh, kind of like a leather or, or some, some other fabric. So the spikes would have to be metallic, so I need to, I would make sure that they protrude. Um, shading in his uh, muscular features. Make sure that, that I do that. Make sure that they're like, shaded in and that uh, they're enhanced and that they are... Uh, that's indicating his physique. Okay. So, um... So this itinerary of Drake, as I'm drawing this, this itinerary of Drake, he, uh, he again, another guy from the streets, but I'm mixing it a little bit of groundedness with some absurdity. Uh, recently, the, there was a whole thing with um, the K2, and people were getting a high off of K2 and destroying themselves, so I'm doing a storyline right now where Drake is cracking down on the K2, but he's really going after these guys and really just like, killing them, slaughtering them. Like It's very gory stuff. Uh, Drake is a mixture of a dark hero and a brutal monster. He goes after the bad guys, and 
he pulls no punches. Uh, in one shot, in one panel, he punches the guy's head and busts it open, and the eyeballs are falling out all over the place. I mean, a, a creature that big is going to create very serious harm on, on his bad guys. That's just that's just the reality. He's just going to be very vicious. He's angry and vicious, you know. And, and when you live in, in, a, in a neighborhood like Bedford Stuyvesant or any part of Brooklyn or any parts of New York, actually, that are neglected by politicians and drugs are prevalent and gangs are prevalent, forget police brutality. I'm worried about the gangs. The gangs that shoot the playground and sell kinds of drugs and are killing each other. And to me, they're more deadlier than the police officers. A lot more deadlier because they're unchecked. You, know, you can check the police. You can't check uh, gangs. You know, in a way, the police serves that kind of purpose. They they basically offset the gangs, so it's like a one glorified gang gang war, gang turf war. You know, um, but Drake, he's violent, and he goes after these people and he, he slaughters them. And in the first issue that I drew of this new retcon, uh, he he uses more visual strength. He doesn't really use his guns yet, so he's punching people, blasting their heads open, um, like really just uh, destroying them physically. It's brutal and it's gore. That's Drake's world. He, he lives in a very violent, gore world, but he's trying to save it. He's trying to save uh, our city and our society from the drugs, the gang violence, all the stuff that the police can't do because the police are hindered by bureaucracy and, and, and jurisdictions. Drake is not. He's one of those heroes that's just not uh, limited by that. But the challenge is to kind of do a world where it's somewhat plausible. Even though a giant duck is implausible, but to create a world that's plausible, so explaining away how a giant duck can run the city unnoticed or uncaught by the police. And I'll be dealing with issues based on that. And then um, how Drake uh, forms relationships with certain people and how they join him on, on this battle against uh, crime, this battle against drugs, this battle against gang warfare. And you know, eventually I'll probably tackle things like police brutality. Police brutality and... and, and Political corruption. That 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 that's stuff I'll be covering in the Drake Road Warrior Drake uh, comics that I'll be doing at some point. And what am I planning for the comics? I don't know yet. I don't know what plans are yet. I just want to draw it and just create. I'm, a, I'm an artist. I like to create. Um, you know, the Thundercats War promo just showed me that people who can't draw for crap or who have no love for the characters or no no reverence for the source, source material, it's a lost art. That's it. Definitely lost art. So uh, rather than just bitch about it, I'm gonna just draw it and, and show that there is still hope for real artists to come out and draw characters that are visually appealing, visually dynamic, and there's still love for manly style stories, manly style comics that are not tainted by SJW syndrome. I don't like the SJW stuff. I think the SJW stuff is what's bankrupting Marvel Comics. It's bankrupting Marvel. It's destroying Star Wars. It's um, it's already destroying Star Trek. It's infecting Star Trek right now. So I, I'm not a fan of that stuff. To me, you should be allowed to create and draw what you want, regardless of social politics, social identity politics, or sexual identity politics, all that stuff. You should be allowed to draw characters without being told that you're a bigot or a racist. To me, Roy Roy Drake is a character that, that's pretty much an antithesis of the SJW stuff. But as you can see now, here I am drawing and coloring in the vest to make it stand out so you can see how he looks with a dark colored vest. To me, it's part of his visual appeal. In my opinion, I mean, look, I'm not speaking for you guys. This is my opinion. I, I draw the character. This is how I draw him. This is how I want him to look. So it, it's really just me speaking from my own perspective. You guys can um, decide uh, or speak on your own, own behalf what you think. And what you, and tell me what you think. So this is uh, <clears throat> well, I'm almost done. I'm, I'm just going over the finer points, uh, with the shading and uh, musculature, and, and uh, the important thing is differentiating his surface, his skin versus the vest versus the, the metallic spikes, his beak, obviously. So uh, <clears throat> that's what I do. Sometimes I go back, after I finish drawing, I go back and I'll just reshade it. Because sometimes I certain areas turn out to be more darker than others. And the contrast tends to be uh, something I have to address, so I just go back and shade it. So, um, I, I, I like I 
like um, creative. I, I, I like how I can create and, and bring a character out there, and, and um, just uh, how how nice it looks, how great it looks. I'm, I'm, I'm very happy with that. Even though I don't draw as much as I used to, when I do draw, it, it's like I haven't lost a touch. I haven't, I haven't, I haven't uh, lost a step. That's, that's what I love about the character. That's what I love about doing Drake and my other characters. That's how the dagger got to start. He's, he got to start doing uh, comics. So when I drew some of his earlier comics before I did Hangman's News, he had a backstory that I had to kind of retcon or alter for Hangman's News because. You know, he, he looked a little different and his backstory was a little different. Well, not his backstory, but his, his origin. Well, not his origin. Just the story in general. I mean, he was still a man altered by alien technology. But I, you know what it was? It was his purpose. I, I retconned his purpose. That's what it was. But that's one of those videos from the day. Right now, I'm just talking about Rogue Warrior Drake. And between him and Toothpick Man, they're two of my first characters that I've created. And they're the two characters that, uh, to me, that started... Uh, its own universe. So I'll go back one day and I'll do a Toothpick Man video. I'll do that. That's my cat in the background. I'll do my own Toothpick Man video. Well, so this is Rogue Warrior Drake. And uh, this is how the character looks. I hope you guys enjoyed me drawing. I hope you guys enjoyed the way it looks. I hope you guys enjoyed uh, this video as a whole. And uh, if you like what I do and you like the art that I'm presenting in film or art or drawing, whatever, hit the like button, subscribe to my channel for more content, and uh, I will see you guys in the next video. Thank you guys and take care.